problem right now with traveling, especially with these little devices, is that you know if I really want to know where to get somewhere, I can just go into the app, type where I want to go, it maps it on the phone, and it tells me with a blue dot and a blue line where I want to go. The problem is I'm not exploring the city anymore. I'm exploring a little line that's given to me. And if I step away from that blue line, I have to recalculate. Or you know, have to stay true to that blue line. And even with augmented reality, the worst part is now I'm exploring the city through a lens or through this screen instead of actually exploring the city. So is there a way, and I'm proposing, to take the information off of this little screen and device and actually put it into the environment so that your navigation through the environment is also tied to your exploration of the environment. So, you know, the problem, as I said, is by staring at a pulsing blue dot on our phone screens and notating where we are on the planet, you know, we miss really the excitement of life around us. And, you know, there's this whole movement of travel going back to the 19th century with the flaneur that we really lose by just knowing where we are all the time um, and not getting lost. So the idea is that, you know, on, the, on your phone, you can really say, you know, like now, where do you want to go? I want to go to the Batsan Hustle in Bolzano. You know, and then what you do is you can choose an avatar for you, who will represent you. And then instead of sending it to Google or to whatever app, you then send it onto these screens in the environment, you know, that are located strategically through the cities, on hiking trails, in the food via system, and then, now instead of following the blue line, you can really follow this person. And in a way, it becomes calm. That it's there for you when you want to look at it, but if you want to detract from your path, it's still there waiting for you. But the other idea, too, is that, you know, this isn't just a discrete object or a single system. It could be really seen as a network. Um, so that a storefront could take this idea and implement it into their storefront. So that, yes, you could have, you know, the avatar wave at you as you walk by saying, hey, maybe you're interested in you know, the food in here, or the makeup, or the clothes. But you could also, you know, basically one problem that a lot of people have is with restaurants. You know, if you walk by, you may be from Russia, and you don't speak German, you don't speak Italian. So how do you know what's in there? Well, you know, if you say, I know Japanese, or I am Japanese, when you walk by, it's because using electronic displays, you know, the menu could change for you. So instead of having just an avatar, you could also have the language come up for you. So that's a way to, you know, as people from different countries with different languages come to Bolzano and Sutarol, that you can also open up the experience to them. So going back to the idea of navigation, you know, much like Amazon, you know, and many other websites, as you shop, it's collecting a database. It knows what you've looked at, and it can recommend other products for you. Um, in the same way, because you're now recording you know, where people are in space, where people are interested in, you know, seeing you can take that information and really create kind of a smart playlist for them. So yes, you, know, you can have your little avatar telling you, you know, your original path to you know, the next town to Britain is to the east, let's say. But you've been stopping by a lot of churches. Maybe you want to head the other way. There's a really interesting historic church that you can go to. So again, the personal in interface, you know, really comes back to the smartphone, but instead of always relying on it to look at, you do it once, you set it, and you forget it to take a quote from Know, some TV personalities in the States. So again, you, know, you can select your destination, you know, select your avatar. Who is it or what's your icon that you're going to look for? You know, what image do you care about? And then you can move on from there. You know, and this isn't you know, kind of a new idea in a way. You know, these two <coughs> shots are from Bolzano. That you know, throughout you know, Suits World, there are actually these little hiking markers. Um, that are painted on. But also these stickers. Uh, the museum is a contemporary arts museum. And that they've actually gone to the point where instead of putting up signs and we've always seen them, you know, screwing them into lampposts or whatnot, that they started putting them on the ground. And in Italy, like in many other cities and many other countries, there's a culture of sticker bombing. So that people, in a way, through an artistic practice, take stickers that they created and stick them on the environment. So this is a kind of devoid of a context. You know, but what if your trip isn't linear, isn't just on foot? Maybe you're going to the next town or you're taking a regional bus or even possibly the train. Well, you know, because this is a network, you could feasibly see that it's, you know, also placed on buses. So that instead of wondering, you know, my, my uh, incident was I was trying to get to the next town over. And since I didn't know German to read these signs, I didn't really know what to do or what bus to take. And, you know, the fear of asking the local. So what if, you know, my little icon is something, this is your bus, get on this bus. You know, and also
also to tell me to get off. So the technology, this is kind of a quick sketch, but really what's involved is, first there's an ink or e paper display. Um, Mirasol, um, you know, just came out, but there are also other experiments from you know, many other companies um, investigating low energy color displays. But also that it's tied to a Bluetooth unit, which I'll explain in a moment why that's there. But also, um, you know, kind of cellular mode to really connect to the internet and to the world at large. So back to the Bluetooth and kind of how I foresee this working. So basically you're a person and you choose your avatar and you say you want to go from A to B, wherever B is, you know, through your cell phone. Why the Bluetooth is important is that that's how you're located in space. Um, that, you know, right now there's some airports that have Bluetooth antennas. This is what happens is, as your phone with Bluetooth capability walks up, it senses that there's a signal. And that signal, as you move through space to the next Bluetooth antenna, it says, oh, now you're in a new zone. And so on and so forth. So you know where a person is in space without them having to do anything. So even if they don't subscribe and they have their Bluetooth on, you can still see a point in space moving along while still protecting their privacy, that you don't know that they're male 24, that maybe they didn't bond to that information. That's sent to the cellular network, as I said, um, to servers that will find their directions, but also you know, find the preferences. Maybe there is that church in the next town. Uh, and then send it back to that display saying, you're going to the left, you're going to the right. But also, because you're collecting all this information, where people are stopping, maybe en route to the church, they're stopping by this great restaurant, and 90% of people are doing that. That data becomes important for the, the tourism boards and tourism groups. Um, so that now we know paths that people are moving through space. And it's not about where they're staying, but it's where they're going, and possibly stopping en route. You know, again, it's not a culture to avoid. This is a, a photo in Bolzano. Uh, where people took over a storefront, you know, and feasibly you can now, you know, introduce a new level onto that context um, with these icons. The great thing is that it's really focusing on call technology, that it's not about always having information in your face. That really, if none of these are your icon, you're probably going to just walk by without noticing it. But if you chose, let's say, the, the Deutschland flag, or the Deutschland sticker, you know, you're always going to look 